cost concepts and cost allocation in managerial accounting. We've been talking about the manufacturing income statement and you'll remember that that sales or revenue minus cost of goods sold equals gross margin minus selling administrative and general expenses or operating expenses equals net income. Now let's take a look at what makes up cost of goods sold and we said there are three inventory accounts involved. So let's think about this in terms of, um, well, your kitchen. In your kitchen you have a refrigerator and you have a bunch of cabinets that you keep food in. And that is like material inventory. In other words, those are raw materials that are waiting for you to use to be processed into some recipe or product. So where we start in a business that makes a product is we start with beginning materials inventory, the stuff that's like in your refrigerator or in your cabinets, to which we add net purchases. You went shopping during the period and you bought groceries and more things that you put in those cabinets or in the refrigerator. That gives you the materials that are available for use. From that, if you subtract what's still in your refrigerator or in your cabinets at the end of the period, the difference between what's available and what you didn't use is what you used. So these are the materials that you took out of your cabinets or your refrigerator and used to make a product or to provide a service. Um, now, what else, what other ingredient is in the product or service? Well, there's direct labor. In other words, the hands that took the materials and formed it or shaped it or mixed it together to make a product. In addition, there's a third ingredient. That third ingredient, remember, is overhead. Overhead includes all those indirect uh, product related costs that you've got to have, like depreciation, like electricity, like uh, lights, power, uh, the supervisor, um, cleanup, all of those things that have to be there but are not directly traceable to the product like materials and labor are. So these three ingredients, materials, labor, and overhead, are added together and they're called the current manufacturing costs. To which you add beginning work in process. Was there something in your mixing bowl at the stroke of midnight, the first uh, day of your period? So you want to add what did you currently add plus what was already there. You subtract what you're still mixing, stroke of midnight, last day of the period. And that gives you a very important subtotal known as the cost of the goods manufactured. If someone asks you, well, how much did it cost you to make the products? Well, the cost of the goods manufactured tells you the total cost of the products that you produced. So cost of goods manufactured to which I'm going to add the third and final kind of inventory, which is finished goods. So what did you produce this period? Add to that beginning finished goods inventory. What did you produce last period that are ready for sale? Um, and then I'd subtract ending finished goods inventory to get me cost of goods sold. Now, one other thing I want to make sure you understand. Remember this cost of goods manufactured, and I'm going to abbreviate it C-O-G-M. Cost of goods manufactured in dollars divided by the units produced so cost of goods manufactured divided by the units produced will give you your cost per unit. And you will notice that in these chapters we spend a lot of time asking how much does a product cost? Well, now you know how to, get to find how much does a product cost. A product costs the cost of goods manufactured, what came out of the production process in dollars, divided by the number of units that were produced or came out of the production process. That's the unit cost. 